This is how they're trying to promote condom use in India. I have discovered a way to cure the AIDS. Quick, quick. And this is how they do it in Africa. Toronto condoms. Around the world, everyone knows condoms are a hard sell. Yeah, I'm just looking for a condom. Why don't we just try one on? How does that one feel? Yeah, it's good. Real comfortable. And here in Australia, with sexually transmitted infections soaring amongst adolescents, it's clear condoms still aren't cutting it with those who matter most. Let's face it, the trouble with condoms is you're aware of them. But what if I were to tell you there was a condom that was invisible, imperceptible and felt just like real skin? Well, a group of scientists in Wollongong think they're on the verge of a breakthrough, a 21st century condom that would be a pleasure, not a duty, to wear. The search for the perfect condom goes back at least as far as the ancient Egyptians, who used linen sheaths to keep their members clean. In the 17th century, the linen sheath was replaced by this radical innovation, the sheep gut condom. So, Damien, what were these like? I imagine that if they're an improvement on the linen one, yeah. I would hate to have seen a linen one. <laughs> The invention of vulcanised rubber was the next technological breakthrough. Now, we have an example here from the 1930s. Oh, goodness, that is thick. That looks worse than the <laughs> sheep gut condom, I have to say. It does indeed. Like the sheep's gut condom, it's reusable. And this was gradually refined to the rubber latex condoms we know today. And while pregnancy prevention has always been important, the rise and fall of condom popularity has very much paralleled fear of disease. So this is the sort of condom that would have been used by soldiers in the Second World War. Absolutely. And there was an awful lot of resource having to go in to treat troops for gonorrhea and syphilis. Back then, syphilis killed more people every year than AIDS in its heyday. But then came penicillin, the pill, and condom use plummeted. But now we know every one of us could... Until the 80s, and AIDS scared the pants and condoms back onto people. Always use condoms. Always. Next time you go to bed with someone, ask yourself, do you know how many people they've been to bed with? Not only did condoms halt the AIDS trajectory, they were a major dampener of other STIs as well. But by the noughties, HIV was no longer fatal, fear dropped and STIs rebooted their inexorable rise. The one that worries a lot of health professionals these days is chlamydia. Its prevalence doubled in the last 10 years. By age 25, 25% of women will have caught it. And the peak age for contracting chlamydia? 14 to 15 years of age. And while there is one new condom material on the market, polyisoprene, which is noticeably stretchier and I'm told better feeling than latex. Oh! So, so that, that was, was the latex the... one. Even polyisoprene isn't the same as nothing at all. And then in 2013, the University of Wollongong stumbled upon the problem by chance. It was a random news article where it really came about, where it was just, uh, yeah, Bill Gates wants safer sex. The lab was working on a material called hydrogels in a bid to develop better, more tissue-like human prosthetics. But when Robert saw the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was offering grants to any research group who could develop a better-feeling condom, he wondered if some of their skin-like products would fit the bill. It was a couple of days before the grant application was due. I ran into a sex shop and was looking at the range of dildos that were there, and there was a wide range. Went back to the lab and didn't know if this was going to work or not, but we just took a vat of this material and started dip coating the dildo in this. It looked like a condom, like there was even some ribbing on it. So it really kind of showed us that, look, we may have a chance here. So what is this magical material? So now we're going to make a hydrogel. Like the name implies, hydrogels are part water and part polymer. 
and they form a sort of jelly. Oh, right. So they've, they've formed perfect little balls. Yeah. So I can pick one up? Yeah. By varying the basic ingredients, you can dramatically alter the properties of the material. And being part water, their texture is much more like human tissue. Can I squeeze it? Yes. Some are soft, like you find in cosmetics. It yeah. breaks up into bits. Some are tough, like you find in contact lenses. So tough hydrogels have only been around for the last 10 years or so. Right. It's a very new class of materials, uh, but obviously having very exciting uh, potential. But was one tough yet flexible enough to replace latex? Surprisingly quickly, they identified three possible hydrogels. They then tested them to see if they would block viruses. Tick, it seems so. They tested whether they could be dip-coated and therefore mass-produced. They subjected them to physical testing, tensile testing, and then, just a month ago, for the first time, the all-important blow-up test. And again, we're finding that our materials actually come in the range of latex and polyisoprene. So now, the all-important question. How does it feel? You know, I can actually feel the ridges of my fingerprint underneath it. There you go. So that's probably actually going on something called tactile sensitivity. Yeah. So this material is, if you look at the mechanical properties, more tactile sensitive than other rubbers. If I compare it with the ultra-thin polyisoprene condom... Yeah. I mean, look, this is pretty good too, this one. Yeah, but this is slightly better. So if you have something that is not impeding that sensation, potentially this could be enhanced mm. pleasure during sex. Mm. And that's the potential hydrogels offer. They may be better at transmitting the feeling of what's underneath. Imagine if there was a condom out there that actually improved what sex was like. I mean, that would be amazing. I don't know if we'll ever get that far, but at least we're on the line of where we can make the existing condoms obsolete and make and the new condoms feel a lot better. It is really promising. But as we all know, the leap between a promising material and a commercial product isn't always made. So while we're waiting for the 21st century condom, don't forget to use the tried and tested ones we have. Thanks, guys. Come again. Thank you.